Zing Chow! Hello, herzlich willkommen auf meinem Kanal. Hello, welcome to my channel. Aqua ba mi always so. Take a seat, get yourself something to drink, as I am doing. Orange juice. Welcome to my channel. My name is Phoebe, and this is the Phoebe Way. On the Phoebe, we talk about life in Germany, social issues, legal issues, traveling to, from, around Germany, and in fact, everything about Germany. I'm your girl. I'm your plug. So subscribe, and if you like this video, like it, share it, and comment. Let me know what you like to see about life in Germany. Today's video is about Vietnam. My culture shocks in Vietnam. You say, but well, you just said we talk about Germany. Why are we talking about Vietnam? So last year I talked about my culture shocks in Germany and I mentioned I had traveled to other places and some of you wanted to know my culture shocks in Vietnam and what to look out for, right? Especially as a black woman. I'm here for you. So we traveled to Vietnam, that was in 2019, December, actually 30 December. And then we came back, I think third week of January. I think that those were our dates. And then in Vietnam, we landed in Hanoi then we took a flight down to Ho Chi Minh. We explored Ho Chi Minh City a bit, and then we went on to Cambodia by road, and then went up to Siem Reap. We saw the Angkor Wat Temple, or temples and other temples, and then we came down to Phnom Penh. From Phnom Penh, we flew back to um, Vietnam. We went to Da Nang, and from Da Nang, we worked our way up to Hanoi. So we did Hoi An, Hue, Cat Ba Island, and all of that. If you want to know more about the itinerary, if you need any tips, just hit me up, shoot me an email or comment in the comment section below and I will answer you, okay? So, let's talk about the culture shock. But before anything, I'll have to say that Vietnam was a beautiful experience. Vietnam opened my eyes in so many ways and I'm going to share some of them with you. And it shocked me and it has impacted my life so much. So, so much. So, let's just get into it. Number one is everybody's shock when you arrive in Vietnam is the motorbikes. Basically a flood of motorbikes. I expected that they would have the motorbikes because I had read about it before I had traveled. But I did not expect this magnitude. And also not the way of employment, how they use the motorbikes. Basically they could move a whole house, like a whole household, on the motorbike. They transport their family, even their kids when they were sleeping. Once I saw a girl sleeping on top of the motorbike whilst the father was, was just riding. And they have, because they have like bolts, even like the motorbike version of it, they have, um, I think they have, I've forgotten the name they, they gave, I think it was bolts, they had green, they have like different kinds of uh, motorbike um, services, they have different kinds of um, share, uh, motorbike sharing as well, so if you want to hire a motorbike, it's easy in Vietnam, definitely, definitely. So that was one thing, and talking about motorbikes, let's go to the traffic rules. Hmm traffic so if you want to cross the road as a pedestrian when i talk about germany and saying that in ghana they wouldn't let you pass in germany like everything works everybody adheres to the rules in vietnam nobody sees you unless you raise your arm or you have to make sure there's no car coming you have to be very fast and cross really fast because that's it that's just basically it. you have to be fast about it and i think it's more intense than in ghana yeah 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 number two let's talk about the food hmm La la. Get yourself something to drink first. So with the food, right? What shocked me was that the, the street food, like in, in Ghana would say the chop bars or in Germany would say the imbis, they had better food, better tasting food than the restaurants and expensive restaurants. Definitely, definitely. And if you are from Ghana, you know like this, um, roadside vendors and all of that. They have a lot of that in Vietnam as well. I didn't expect that. I don't know what I was expecting, but a lot of it was like that. And the locals were eating there. And basically what the locals eat is where the good food is. That's, that's just it. So, yep, the food there is good. But, but be careful what you eat because it's out there in the open. You see like frogs being, being skewed and being Roasted or grilled by the roadside, you see it. At first, because I thought it was chicken thigh, but I, I got closer. I saw that the frog legs were like, the hands were like this, the, the, the feet were like that, and I realized, oh, this thing, frog, oh yeah, sure, it's a frog. And then actually, on, on our first day, on actually on our second day in Ho Chi Minh, that was after New Year. So basically, our first day, first day of 2020, we were at this grill restaurant, and then we saw like. 
you know how they'll, they'll put the food out, the fresh food you have to take it to your table and grill and actually have the grill in built in the table and I saw like the frog legs, I was like, mm, okay, not bad. But when I saw the full frog, I was a bit shocked. Definitely, I won't lie about that. And then one thing you have to know is that when Vietnamese people are eating, they, are, they let you know that they're eating, so they're allowed eaters. I didn't expect that. So one time we were on the bus and I just said, mm. and it didn't stop immediately. The person had bought mangoes and he was enjoying it so much and I was just going crazy but yes yes they are allowed eaters so expect that that shocked me talking about food when Vietnamese people go out to eat they eat in big groups like the whole family three generations they're all together eating and it's beautiful to see I didn't expect that and that was so so beautiful that was so beautiful and Vietnamese food is basically full, so it's like a, they put a big pot there and it's like broth, basically the soup, and then you add your ingredients and your meat, your your veggies, your noodles. Everybody basically makes their own. It was nice to see and it's, it's just like a, a collective uh, meal and that was so nice. And even like the young people, when you're going out to eat, it's a big group and they sit on these little red chairs, as I said, like the imbis or the chop bars or the little restaurants or the spots they're sitting on these low tables and low chairs and everybody they have like their own buffet per click and everybody's just digging in and you know enjoying and that was nice to see that was nice to see and then talking about family right Vietnamese people have this really high sense of family that I was surprised because I was expecting them to be Buddhist or you know some other religion or probably even some should be Catholics but no, they're actually mostly ancestral worshippers. So on certain days of the of the month, you they also follow a different calendar. So their lunar calendar, they have certain days that set aside for their deceased family members and they pray for them, they, they burn money for them. So they have this money that is for the afterlife, that they give them money to be able to live well in the afterlife. And you know, they just respect them a lot. And that is one thing that they have they even have altars in their homes for the past on family members that's one thing that i was shocked by and yeah they they really care about family like the family value is high in vietnam how girls will just wear their makeup dress up nicely come out take their selfies for instagram all these pictures you see on instagram a lot of work goes into it you know and one thing too is you have to know that they are king of they are the kings of photoshop you see an apartment online and you go and check it out real and it's like what filter did they use because it's not what it looks like on Airbnb it doesn't it doesn't look like that like so yeah that's it they love their pictures and they just have this picture culture so coming from Germany where once you're taking pictures and all people are looking like what is she doing what is she doing they, they are curious you know some people would even give you side eye but in Vietnam, it's gang gay, but it's normal. Young girls are doing it. One thing I noticed though was that their makeup was always a few shades lighter than their skin. Like the makeup is always much more pale than the skin. I don't know what was going on with that, but I was surprised to see that. Another thing I noticed too was that Vietnam is ready. Vietnam is ready for tourism. And they actually have a lot of tourism going on. Especially on weekends where they have like these all these buses coming in from China with Chinese um, tourist weekends It's always busy at the tourist place So if you go to Vietnam and you want to do um, sightseeing make sure you do your sightseeing on the weekdays and not on weekends when the Chinese people have coming from the weekend so do the things that are normally crowded on the weekdays and on the weekends do something else where it's less crowded or less populated or less known, you know Yeah, definitely do that so they, they, they are ready for it. They have so many hotels um, built, even sometimes I think it's even too many, too many hotels. But one thing that doesn't go for them being becoming touristic is the language barrier. So of course you're going to Vietnam, you're going to, you know that it's going to be Vietnamese most of the time, but the, it's the much younger generation that speaks English. Even when they do, it's hard for you to understand it because Vietnamese itself is a fast language, so they speak at a fast pace and translating that into English 
makes it harder for you to understand them and also because with their accent they it's like they they i would say they swallow the last syllable like they don't spit it out they don't they don't speak it out so they just it's like it's missing you know so it's going to be difficult for you but english there is in high demand if you're looking for a job maybe you learn with them you're going to teach english there maybe there were hardly any black people that i saw so most of the black people that i saw were either americans black americans traveling and being tourists like myself but to see like Africans working there, it was hard. It, I hardly saw it. Maybe my whole three weeks or two weeks, I saw maybe 10, not even up to. And the most I saw was actually in Ho Chi Minh City. Um, and that was on New Year's Day when the streets were full. Apart from that, I did not see a lot of black people. And that explains why, as a black person, when you travel there, they, they stare at you. Of course, they would stare at you. Um, they, okay, they stared at me because one, I'm tall two um black and three they actually pointed at my booty so that was those were the reasons why they were saying and then another thing too was that my partner is white so they were like how are they a couple black white i think they don't see that a lot of times so that is also another thing now one thing i did not expect was the similarities between vietnam and ghana so when it comes to how things are done i thought they were much different but we are basically almost the same and that has changed my, my outlook on life in, in many ways. For me, it has taught me that there's no right way to do things. There's no correct culture. They're just different cultures and each culture should do whatever works for them. I saw, um, I saw someone sleeping with the broom. When I go to buy something that was in Huawei, um, we wanted to buy something, I had to call the, younger, uh, the, the young boy, maybe eight, nine years, to come speak English with us to, for us to communicate. And that, that is also normal. Bargaining is, is, is a virtue there basically. So I bought this shirt in uh, Vietnam. I bought two, so I got it at a fairly good price. But, um, and then also I left my sunglasses in Germany. I forgot them, I got to Vietnam and she started I think from 300,000 and I just had to keep beating the price down, 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 down. And at the end I got it for less than half the price. So come to the market with lots of patience and yeah you, you you get the price that you originally wanted wanted to pay and i'm pro i'm actually sure that that was even too much if it was a vietnamese buying and the people that paid less you know and also with the hawking like they they have like this um piece of log or is it bamboo or yeah, i think it was bamboo and they have these baskets and then they have it filled with fruits or whatever that they have they're selling and mostly it's ladies, you know, they're walking around selling to, to other people. But one big difference, one thing that shocked me was that the way they market, the way they the way they strategically market their products to you. So in Ghana, the person would just walk around, say, I'm selling this, ice water, blah, 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 blah. And if you hear it and you need it, you call them, right? But they don't come to you and um, tell you to buy and persistently tell you. But in Vietnam, they'll be like, um, they don't, first of all, they, they don't, they don't um, say the things out, but they come to you personally and they'll be like, buy my stuff. You'll be like, no. They'll be following you. You'll be like, no. In fact, sometimes you have to just say no, like a stern no. I'm not interested in buying before they will understand. <laughs> that was one thing. And sometimes that was one way. The other way is that they'll come to you like really nice. Oh, you are so beautiful. You have such beautiful skin. Oh, is that your husband? Oh, you're such a beautiful couple. And you, you're just saying, thank you, thank you, thank you. Before they know, she's like, buy my stuff. I'm like, let me play with you. I, I thought we were playing. <laughs> but no, so by the third time that had happened, I realized that, okay, that's the strategy. So I didn't, I wasn't starting small talk. I wasn't starting small talk just like that. No, 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 no. So that was it. Another thing too that made me know that see the similarity was the market markets there was markets everywhere in every city they had their own markets basically just like in ghana um fresh foods you know they had the they had, they had like departments you'd wear the self um clothes you have the fresh fruits outside all of that it was nice to see but different um to ghana is that and in germany also is that there they have night markets and night markets there were so beautiful so so beautiful because they would have live music, live performance. 
they have fresh food and then they have like a designated area for you to go and sit and eat with the mats those mats are those kete in ghana as well yes so they put those on the floor all over and then you sit down and you eat and enjoy so guys that was it That's, those are the reasons why i enjoyed vietnam as a black woman i wouldn't advise you to go alone i would say go in a group so when you're staring and pointing at you and all that you don't feel awkward because that was definitely one thing for me i had my personal bodyguard so that was really nice but it's safe nobody will do anything to you they're not going to be aggressive or rude to you like that no they just they just wouldn't start a, a conversation with you like you would do in like germans will do with you if you come to germany but yeah and if they you see them talking about you laughing about you speaking vietnamese and i don't know if they do it's other nationalities as well but as a, as a black person, you see that a lot because of your hair extensions, because of your body type. They'll be staring, they'll be giggling, pointing at you. That's the things that I saw. That was the unpleasant part. But apart from that, the food was good. The weather was amazing most of the time. And the place, like the, the views, the views, the views, beautiful, beautiful. I love them. I love them. I've come to the end of this video guys, if there's anything you want to know, let me know, comment your questions down below and like, share and subscribe if you like this, there will be more content on Germany soon, we'll be going to Ulm next week, yup, we found out Ulm next week and for work but I'll take you guys along, so don't go anywhere, subscribe so you'll see what Ulm is all about and there are other um, topics we're going to be discussing this year as well, dating in Germany. Is it, is it easy for you to date a German guy? Is it, why do German guys date black girls? Why don't they date black girls? Or vice versa, why do black guys date German girls? Why don't they date? We'll talk about that, all of that right here. So don't go anywhere, subscribe, activate the notification bell so that when I upload something, you'll be one of the first to know. Thank you so much for your support and see you same time next Sunday. Bis nächsten Sonntag, bleibt gesund, bleibt zuversichtlich. Hat it Abstand, Maske auf. Keep your distance, keep your mask on. Stay at home if you can and just please, please, please stay hopeful and stay healthy. See you same time next week. Cheers!